Okay, yes, welcome to Empire Radio. It is Monday the 25th of October. How are you guys doing out there? It's been a mad week, guys. It's been a mad week. It's always been a mad week for me, but you know what? It's been it's been interesting. It has been very, very interesting. And the nature of today's show is going to be slightly different from how I've been doing all the other shows before. Um, and the reason why it's going to be different is because this ain't going to be about all the hype. This is more uh, storytelling. This is going to be more storytelling about what I'm going to be calling the hero's journey. Now, what is the hero's journey? Well, first and foremost, right, whether you know it or not, or whether you like it or not, you are in a movie called Life. Life is your movie, and you are the main star of that movie called Life. And you are the hero. You are the Marvel character. And you are going on a journey. And every hero in every movie has to go on a journey. And in that journey, there are certain points that happen along that journey for the hero for, to get what he wants or to get what she wants. So I'll give you a typical example of one song, sorry, not song, one movie which is very popular and the new one is coming out in Christmas and I'm talking about The Matrix, right? So before I get into this, I'm just going to mention the different stages of the hero's journey. So firstly, you have a normal person living in an ordinary world. This is you right here, right now, living in your ordinary world. Then it gets to the next stage called the call to adventure. So you are called to an adventure to be doing something different, right? And it then gets to a, junc a junction where you either refuse the call or you basically just go back to staying in the ordinary world. Because we all have choices in life about new things that come to us. We either accept the opportunity or we reject the opportunity. So when you accept the opportunity, when you take on this call to adventure, you then meet with a mentor, right? And this mentor is going to be saying some stuff to you that's going to challenge what you currently believe, right? And this mentor is going to be challenging you and once again, you have the choice to accept what this person says or reject what this person says. So, you come to this junction where you're going to cross the first threshold. This is that first hurdle. Because it's like, it's all brand new to you. It's like, okay, do I go down this journey or do I not go down this journey? And when you do, cho when you do choose... To go down this journey, right, you're going to be tested. You, you, you're going to be tested. There's going to be enemies. But you're also going to be meeting allies. Think of a film right now, right? You're thinking of a film right now where there are, um, you know, it started off with a character. And then this character meets people that's going to help, help him on his journey, right? They're going to help him or help her on the journey, but there's also going to be enemies that's going to test you. They're going to get in the way of this journey. Because remember, this character, that hero, is seeking for some sort of liberation. That hero is seeking to save someone, right? That hero has some sort of goal. You understand this, right? So it then gets to a next, a next stage where you have the approach to the innermost cave it's that it's that it's that introspection and then it moves on to the ordeal and then you have the reward and then there's that roadblock there's that roadblock but then you have that resurrection and then there's that 
return with the Alexia. Now, some of you may not even understand what the hell I have just spoken about. But the purpose of today's show, it's really to inspire as I break down an example and then talk about my own journey as well. So let's go back and talk about the Matrix, okay? So this character, Neo, starts in an ordinary world. His name is Thomas Anderson, where he lives a double life as a regular citizen, um, as Neo, but he also is a hacker as well. Because for those of you that have seen that movie, you know, you know, these people come to his door, right? So he lives as a hacker, and we can see that... You know, he isn't exactly the happiest guy. Do you know what I'm saying? But then there's a call to adventure. Because if you remember in the film, he receives these crypto, uh, these cryptic messages saying, wake up, Neo, on his computer. Wake up, Neo, which is referencing the Matrix. This is that call to adventure that I was talking about, right? And if you remember, Neo didn't really know what the hell was actually going on, right? So, he, at this stage, he then, you, he can either take on the thing, or he would uh, not take it on. So, there's a refusal of the call, so he talks to Trinity, but isn't sure if it's a dream. Remember... So he went to this club and that's where he met Trinity, right? If we back it up a little bit, these people came to his door to collect this, I don't know, some disc or whatever, some hacking thing, right? And remember the cryptic message that said, follow the white rabbit. So that was his call to adventure. He was following signs that he re had received for all you spiritualist, signs from the universe. So he followed the white rabbit. This is the sign. You follow the signal. So he went along. So he accepted it. And then he received the next piece of his puzzle, right? Which was following the white rabbit. And then, it, then he met Trinity, which was the next piece of his puzzle. But he wasn't sure if it was a dream. So he's met, he's now following Trinity and it, the next stage of his journey is to meet with a mentor. So he meets Morpheus, right? And he tells Neo to take the red pill, which shows truth, or the blue pill, he can return back to his old life. So, so, do you understand what I've just said here, guys? Do you understand? At every stage of difference, there's a choice to move forward or a choice to return. You understand what I'm saying? Now, for those who've seen the movie, we know that Neo took that red pill. He has now moved forward in that journey. So he's, he's, he, now it gets to crossing the first threshold. So he chooses the red pill and he wakes up from the Matrix. Now... Here's where it's going to come into tests and allies and enemies. So Morpheus trains Neo to fulfill his role as the one who is going to free humanity. Right? Pay attention here, guys. It's because this relates to you in your life. This is serious here. So Morpheus trains Neo to fulfill his role <clears throat> excuse me, to fulfill his role as the one, right? Now, you're having your training, you're getting better, but now these skills have to be put to use, right? So the next is approach to the innermost cave. You're basically going within and the oracle who he meets, which is that next piece of the puzzle, tells Neo that he or Morpheus is going to die, and Neo has the power to choose who it's going to be. Now, this can be a very challenging time. It definitely was for Neo. But I'm not saying in your life 
you have the choice of who's going to die. But as you study this subject further, the person that needs to die is you. But not you physically. It's you on a spiritual level, your old self. Because in order to receive the new, you've got to get rid of the old self. If you guys understand where I'm going with this, okay? Anyway, so the ordeal. Neo's group is ambushed by agents in the Matrix. These are those tests and these are these enemies that come in that are trying to stop you from becoming your higher self. Neo wants to become his higher self and the agents are doing everything in their power to stop it because the more the universe has people that's going to free humanity, the more enemies that are going to come. The more agents are going to come to test you as Neo, right? So it then gets into a reward stage and Neo starts to blame himself for Morpheus' capture. And he chooses and has the courage to basically re-enter. He has the courage to re-enter that matrix to go and save Morpheus. So what I'm saying is, with you guys in your life, you have to have that courage to go back and basically save yourself. You're basically saving humanity. You're saving yourself. See, what you have to understand about these movies, guys, is it is really referencing you. There are subliminals in these films to get you to wake up to your reality, to live your purpose, to live your dream. And there's going to be enemies, there's going to be tests, there's going to be allies. You understand what I'm saying? So, there will be a roadblock. So before Neo can leave that matrix again, Agent Smith has to kill him. So remember, there's that scene where he gets shot, bang, 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 multiple shots to the chest. And then he falls over. And in the movie, you would think this guy is dead. But guess what? He did die. But it was the old self that died. Because remember, after he got shot, he woke up. And he had this realisation that he was the one. The one where he believed. And he could block the bullets that were coming his way from the agents. And then he could reverse those bullets to fire back. At the agents. Are you guys hearing what I'm saying here? Right? You hearing what I'm saying? So, it then gets to the resurrection. Trinity tells Neo she loves him. So he must be the one. Neo revives and kills the agents, like I just said. And then there's the final stage, where you return with the Alexia. Where Neo makes a call in the Matrix. Telling the machines that he will free humanity. He has achieved the higher self. He has believed. He has, as Neville Goddard would put it, achieved a new state of consciousness. A new vibration where the old reality no longer exists because he's on a different frequency. He's on a different wavelength. And he's standing up to his enemies who are the machines where... He is basically going to do what the hell he has to do. Which takes me to a tune called AI Takeover. Which is done by yours truly, Colonel Benter, AI Takeover. But as you know guys, this is a pre-recording. So we're not going to physically hear the song. Because this right here is going to be chopped up. And it's going to be going out on the 25th on EmpireRadio.org. Adrian, don't forget to take that off, okay? So, this is AI Takeover by Colonel Benter. Hope you guys enjoy. And now we're back. So, guys... That was a banging track, right? I mean, with machines taking over, is it possible? 
Of course it's possible. How addicted are you are to your phone? How addicted are you are to social media? You're viewing social media right now. You are on Instagram and you're on all these different social medias, right? Most things are technological, but we're not going to get into that. We're not going to get into that. We are talking about the hero's journey and you being the hero. So what better example for me to explain than my own journey? So I'm now going to explain those different stages I spoke about with my own story and my own journey. So Samuel Benter, ordinary world, you know, um, obviously did a lot of acting gigs back in the day and stuff like that. But it basically, it got to a stage, I think I was about 21 going on 22, where things just wasn't really working out for me. It wasn't working. You know, I had, you know, I finished doing Rangers. I'd finished doing all this other stuff. But then it basically got to a stage where I didn't know what else I was going to do because, I, you know, things wasn't really panning out for me. And I was really at the lowest of the low. You understand what I'm saying? So I remember I was so depressed, like I was like proper drinking and everything like hardcore. And I remember I sat down in my room and I got out a piece of paper and I got a pen. The pen was red. And for the first time ever, what I did, right, I was writing all my thoughts down on paper. And prior to this, I had never done it. And the things I was writing were things along the line of, you know, um, why are other people not happy? You know, is there some sort of secret to happiness? Is there some sort of secret to life? I, I want to I wanna do good in life. I know I've got greatness and, you know, I want to live my best life and by 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 doing this, what I was actually doing was unconsciously, I, what I did not know that I was doing was I was basically putting this out there to uh, the universe. I was basically putting it out there, but I didn't know I was doing this. I was just writing my thoughts down, right? I was just writing it down and even I thought it was weird doing it. But it was the intention behind it because deep down within me, I was seeking some sort of answer. I'm sure you guys have heard, ask and you shall receive. Remember, this is me in the ordinary world and I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm writing it down, passionately writing it. And this is me seeking a call to adventure. Seeking a call to adventure that I didn't even know was going to come. And three days after I had written that, I had a phone call from a friend I had spoken to who used to represent me in my music, right? And this person told me, oh, Sam, you know what? You need to read a book called The Secret. Now, basically, think about this one, guys, right? I'm sure you guys have heard of the book The Secret. If not, go YouTube it or whatever. So think about it, though. This I was I was 21. The last time I spoke to this person was when I was 16 years old. That was years ago. But all of a sudden, three days after I had written that down, this person decided they wanted to contact me and read a book called The Secret. This is the call to adventure. Now, I had a choice. To listen to this person or not listen to this person. Because prior to that, the last time I ever read a book was when I was in secondary school. And you're thinking, really? For me to be reading a book? Are you out of your mind? Like, really reading a book? Like, who's going to do that? But there was something in me that really desired this change. That I actually went to the bookstore to go and buy this book. Yeah? See, I never refused the call, I accepted the call to adventure. So the next piece of the puzzle was buying the book. I had now bought the book and guys, I read the book and I could not stop reading it. And something within me, it, it lit up. It lit up. And I was like, yo, 
there was this sense of, you know what? I can do this. I can actually have what I want. There was a restored hope. There was a, 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 a shift in, in, in my energy, right? And going on with this hero's journey, right? Little did I know, I was yet to meet a mentor. But hold on a second. After I had read this book, I had this inner desire to go to church. Now, guys, I'm telling you, I was a guy that weren't really into religion or any of that. I'm not saying I am now, but I'm talking about the journey. Because no, I don't go to church anymore. But then it was needed for me to gain a certain understanding, which was the next piece of the puzzle. Do you see where I'm going with this, right? See, every single interaction, every single step, it led up to the person I am now. But hold on, let's go back. So I'd gone to church and I'd read the Bible, Old and New Testament, that big fat thing, believe me, I read it, yeah? I read it. But I knew deep down that there was something that needed to be interpreted from this because it wasn't to be taken at face value like most Christians will do it, right? Just talking the things, just talking the things, you don't know, right? So I read it and then one day I was in Tesco. This is where I met someone who would be my mentor. And this is quite funny. I was in Tesco and I was looking at the apple pie section and I was deciding, should I get Mr. Kipling or should I get the Tesco brand? I don't know, because there was a price difference and it was so weird. And then there, this random guy literally just said to me, oh, it's a tough decision, isn't it? And, you know, we were joking about it. And then, you know, he walked off. I decided to get the Mr. Kipling ones, guys. <laughs> but anyway, I then moved to a different aisle. This same guy comes back up to me, right? And he says, I'd like to do a portrait of you. Niggas, you crazy? I don't know you. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, first of all, I thought, nah, this is some like homo thing. I didn't know. But anyway, how I knew it was not was based on the conversation we was about to have in that aisle. And during that conversation, no one else in Tesco came in that aisle for 20 minutes. We were talking, right? And we was talking about the book I just read. And he was telling me about some of his experiences and stuff like that. Anyway, I gave him my card. And on the back of my card, it says... Where thought goes, energy flows, which was a, a, a quote from the secret book that I had read, right? Very weird, but little did I know I would be having more conversations with this guy. You know, we was chatting on the phone and exchanging stuff. And he said to me he had a whole load of resources um, at his yard and he, uh, he lived in Harlesden at the time. But because we had been speaking for a while and he was safe, I thought, you know what? This guy is like a, a, like, like a brethren. So I basically went to his yard. And when I went there, I was seeing all this stuff from black history and, you know, Egypt with pyramids and these meditation uh, uh, focus charts on the wall and quotes on the wall. I was like, yo... This is my kind of zone, right? And then he wanted to play a video to me, which was called Zeitgeist. Go and research this. It's, I think it's like three hours long or something like that. And then I watched this video. And guys, without a doubt, when I watched it, automatically I felt so many different things shatter in my mind of what I believed about so many different things. Because when you desire the truth, right? When you desire the truth, when you accept the call to adventure 
and you've met the mentor, right? You have to accept this next stage and all this stuff was being broken down to me. Stuff about religion, stuff about the Twin Towers and stuff about money and all this other stuff was being broken down to me, right? Now, this was my Morpheus, this guy I met. I took the red pill. And ever since I took that red pill, it has been going in a bottomless pit of deeper truth, deeper understanding, leading to more mentors down the line. But I can't explain all of that in an hour because it's just way too much, guys. So I never had anyone training me. I had to train myself. And this Morpheus character that I had met, he spoke about Vipassana meditation, right? So this was my journey of meditation and understanding what it was. And basically, it's a meditation that requires you to go away for 10 days, right? And it requires you, uh, no, actually, no, it was 11 days, right? And it requires 10 days of meditation. Get this. You're meditating for 10 hours a day. For your whole duration of stay, you can't speak and you're being fed vegetarian meals and you can't make eye contact with people as well. And they separate the guys and the women. They have their own kind of dorms, right? And there's this one room where you meditate. You get given a cushion. You're being guided by another mentor right, who has passed away many years ago, but they have video recordings of this guy that they play, right, and you're literally sitting there, not 10 hours in a row, guys, there's bre little breaks in between, and you also have your lunch break, and you're literally meditating for 10 hours a day, and guys, I can honestly tell you, it's not for the faint-hearted, go and research it, the passion of meditation, it's not for the faint-hearted, because most people leave after a couple of days or even after one day. Because do you honestly think when you're meditating for that amount of time that you are not going to be challenged in your own mind? Because think about it. We've been distracted by so many things externally. It will be hard to focus. But during those meditations, I would say fourth, fifth or sixth day in, you start to notice a difference with your etheric body outside of this physical body that you have. And this is where you start to understand there is more than the physical body that you have. There is subtle realities that you can't physically see. You can't physically hear. But in this moment, you can actually feel feel that subtle reality. You could feel the tingling sensations where if I focus on a particular part of the body, that body will start twitching or that body will start vibrating. And I remember back in the day when I was in the church, I actually said to someone in there, I feel like I'm the one. But didn't Neo also say this? See guys, you are the hero in your journey, if you pay attention to what's going on, don't merely watch these movies for fascination and entertainment. Watch it with a perspective of, you know what? There's something I need to learn from this. You understand? So, anyway, I would definitely say I had met my oracle. And I would definitely say that I've been tested with my own agents in the matrix. Well, who are the agents, guys? The agents in your matrix is anyone that wants to challenge you and give you grief. Any situation that is not working out for you, these are your agents in the matrix because it wants you to give up. It wants you to return back to the ordinary world where you're plugged into that matrix. 
Anyone that is pissing you off, anyone that is causing you grief, anyone that is really challenging you or pushing you or making you really upset is an agent in the matrix. But it takes your training that Morpheus gave you or you gave yourself from any mentor's training that they gave you. It takes that courage and that knowledge and that experience, right? It takes that and your willpower to push past all those agents. Now, in the Matrix, you couldn't really kill the agents because they keep ducking the bullets. They're so fast, right? So you have to always kind of escape these agents. But these agents are always going to keep on coming back. Because remember, you're still a Neo in training, guys. You will always be a Neo in training. So what is your reward out of all of this? Your reward is the goal. Your, your, is your goal. Your goals. Your dreams. Your reward is the new state. It is the new reality that you want to experience. But understand, you're going to get agents of the Matrix coming to you. Because guess what? You're in this physical reality. You're in the Matrix. Because remember what Morpheus said, right? He said, you're in a, the, the Matrix. It, it's the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. And I'm going to pause here. Because... I have a song called Follow the Drip, which actually features Morpheus in the Matrix, right? In my song, which is coming out on my EP, Bentification. Done no, Colonel Benta. Done no, right? So I'm going to play a song right now, which is called Follow the Drip, okay? And pay attention to the lyrics. I'm talking about the Matrix. I'm talking about... Wanting to be uh, a leader, bypassing all the, the BS and actually pushing past all the, agent, all the agents in the Matrix. So here we go. Follow the drip. As you guys know, this is a pre-record, so we're not going to physically hear that right now. So yes, guys, we're back. Follow the drip, man. Yo, that's one of my best songs. And according to a few people I've let listen to my EP, it's their favourite one as well. So I'm just saying, guys, follow the drip. But did you hear the lyrics? Did you hear it? Do you understand what I'm saying? How everything I'm writing, it has something to do with this hero's journey, right? Now, the resurrection. This is that next stage. It is the resurrection stage of the hero's journey. You have to die, guys. Sorry, you have to die. But I don't mean you on a physical level. I'm not saying slit your wrists. I'm not saying go hang yourself. I'm not saying go shoot yourself. No, I'm saying the ego needs to die. I'm saying the old man needs to die. The old woman needs to die. The old concept of yourself. The old self image of yourself. It is that that needs to die. That is what needs to die for you to take on this new ideal that you were presented with when you swallowed that red pill. The new ideal that you are taking on, that you've received knowledge from your mentors and the training you've received from all these spiritual practices. You have to put it to use because guess what? The agents are always going to be there, guys. The question is, to what degree can they affect you? To what degree can they uh, uh, try to test you? Because guess what? They're always going to be trying to test you. They are always going to be coming in to bring you down back to the ordinary world with the machines. With the machines. Because trust me, guys, it's coming. Oh, yeah, I see it coming. So anyway, once you have achieved this new state of consciousness... Now it is returning with the elixir. 
It's you making a call in the Matrix, telling the machines that you're going to free people from humanity. But you're not necessarily telling machines this is the Matrix we're talking about. We're talking about you achieving a certain confidence that you're going to free people with your gifts, your talents, your purpose by choosing to be who you are, not what people want you to be, not taking on people's opinions, not taking on fears, doubts or criticisms, which are the number one killers in a person's psyche in today's world. Well, not even just today, I'm talking about past aeons of years we're talking. So if we go back to my journey now, right, I'm still on this journey of being that hero. Because let's face it, life goes on and it will never end. So, so I've done all this meditation stuff and guess what? It built a new, deeper desire in me to really want to desire truth. And it led to so many different, more books that I started to read. You know, personal development books. Um, trust me, th th when you start reading these books, guys, your, your brain starts to change. What you think starts to change. And you no longer allow the BS of life to hit you. You no longer allow what they're saying in the media to influence you. You no longer allow what they're saying on the news to influence you. You then start to really get into a zone where you question who you want to be around. You question who you give your time and energy to. Because where thought goes, energy flows, right? And there's 24 hours in a day, right? So it really makes you think who you're actually going to be spending your time with. Because let's face it, even some of the agents are your closest friends. Yeah. Some of the agents of the Matrix are your closest friends. Deceiving you. And bless them, they don't know. They don't know that they're doing it because they're in the Matrix. But... You are going to be losing some people on this journey, guys. You will. Because as you start to change, the people you hung around with or the people you were speaking with, they don't see things the way you see them right now. And trust me, your circle will get smaller from the people you used to speak to. But don't worry, guys. You will find people that are on your wavelength that will come into your wavelength. Because your vibration has changed and you are attracting people on that frequency coming to you. So don't worry, you're not going to be alone. But there are times you are going to have to be alone. Because this is a personal journey. This is a you story. A you story. Not a their story. This is a you story. And that's why I have so many conflicts with... Rappers that want to talk about man on road and all of this. Yeah, fair enough. But that's not a you story. That's you talking about the road. But it's not a you story. Your own personal journey story. So going back to my story. The decision to want to create my own show. All about the Mackenzies. I'm actually talking about a personal experience of mine to do with my life. And believe me, guys, this is still part of the hero's journey. It's still that call to adventure. It's still you wanting to use your imagination, which is the true God. It's you wanting to bring that into reality, to bring an awareness to the people that you can do this. It's bringing a new content to the people that you can do this. It's bringing hope to the people that 
you can do this. Because the ultimate thing is waking up humanity whatever way possible. Neo had his journey. I have my journey of how I'm waking up people. <laughs> I mean, doing this radio right now, this is me waking up people. Well, it's my intention to wake up people. Let's just say that whether you get woken up or not. Hey, you are where you are in your level of consciousness, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? You are where you are. But it's not just that. It's me coming back to my music, which is another call to adventure. Because that's how I started, right? Before all the acting, I started off with music when I was 15 years old. 16 years old, and I did it for a few years, and that call to adventure came back. And that's why you're going to hear Bentification when it comes out. Trust me, man, you've already heard two songs from my EP Bentification. You understand what I'm saying? So, I'm saying right here, right now, that this is me calling in the matrix right now that I am freeing humanity. I'm on this journey with my music, with my shows, with this radio show, that I'm freeing humanity with the messages that I'm bringing out. You understand? And I'm not afraid of agents in the Matrix. I will not be afraid. You want to know why? Because I recognize those agents now. Because my higher mental faculties have increased. My imagination, my intuition, my reason, my will, um, my... Uh, my, 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 my focus that those higher mental faculties that we are not taught to exercise. We don't get taught this in school. We don't get taught in college. We don't get taught in uni or whatever. This is a you story. This is a personal story because you are the hero of your journey. And all you're really learning on this journey is about you. You're going back in time. You're going back to recognize, like, who you are. Until eventually the agents of the Matrix, they won't affect you anymore. And do you want to know something? I am really looking forward to this fourth Matrix coming out around Christmas time. Because I would love to see how that story has evolved since 1999. Crazy, right? Crazy. Absolutely, absolutely interesting. I just, I just think it's just insane. So guys, the hero's journey is no joke. And if you want me to talk about some more examples of Hero's Journey because I'm aware not everyone watches The Matrix. But okay, I'll tell you what. Let's talk about Lord of the Rings and talk about the Hero's Journey with Lord of the Rings just to give you some more context to what I'm talking about here. So, Frodo lives comfortably in the Shire and visits Bilbo in the ordinary world, right? And then there's a call to adventure, right? Where Gandalf tells Frodo that he must destroy the One Ring, right? So Frodo lives comfortably in the Shire and visits Bilbo. And now Gandalf tells Frodo that he must destroy the One Ring. So he's now received the call to adventure, right? So... He, he has the refusal of the call because he's reluctant to leave the life that he knows. Remember I said you have a choice on this hero's journey, okay? So, he then meets with a mentor. Gandalf introduces Frodo to the Fellowship of the Ring, right? And here's where it comes to that crossing of the first threshold where... The fellowship 
they set off on their journey to Mount Doom. You see, there's a journey going on here. And remember, there's going to be tests, there's going to be allies, there's going to be enemies. So the Fellowship faces the Balrog, who drags Gandalf into the pit with it, right? And then there's that approach to the innermost cave where Frodo sees the ring's corruptive power and goes forward alone with Sam, right? <laughs> this is for all you Lord of the Rings fans out here who know what I'm talking about here. And there's, there's the ordeal where Gollum, that precious, right, leads Frodo away from Sam to Shelob's lair, but Sam saves him, okay? So Frodo is corrupted by the ring's power and no longer wants to destroy it. So he's understood there's, there's some sort of power here. There's a reward here in this big thing called Call to Adventure. You understand? But hold on, there's a roadblock. Gollum bites off Frodo's ring's finger and jumps after it to his death. So there is some kind of roadblock. But remember, like I said with Neo in the Matrix, it always comes to a point of death, right? It comes to a point of death. So that means after death, there must be a resurrection. So Sauron is defeated and Frodo and Sam reunite with the Fellowship, okay? So what is the next stage? It's the return with the Elixir. So traumatized, Frodo leaves Middle-earth to live in the Grey Havens with the Elves. And that's the hero's journey with Frodo in Lord of the Rings. That was Neo's journey in The Matrix. See guys, just to sum this all up, because we're going to be coming to a close soon. You are the hero in your movie called life. You are on a hero's journey, right? The question is, are you aware you're a hero in your own journey? Are you aware you're even on a journey? Are you aware that you're in a movie called life and you are the star? Or have you been too busy, distracted by the matrix with other people and things that want your attention? What is your attention going on? Is it on your journey or are you really sucked into the matrix with the machines? The machines being not just literally machines, we're talking about people in the matrix. That's what we're talking about here, right? Do not get distracted by what he said or what she said or what they said or what these people are doing. Because remember what I said, this is a you story. You are on this journey of your being a hero so you can live the life that you want. This is really all what the movies are subliminally, subliminally, sorry, teaching you. But are you just being entertained or are you getting the message? Now, for those of you that have been listening to me for a while on Empire Radio, you know I always talk about The Walking Dead, right? Because I decided to watch it again. The Walking Dead is once again one of those shows that is subliminally really teaching you about life. Who is The Walking Dead? Everyone out there in the world that chooses to not appreciate life and live their dreams. But one thing that the hero, Rick Grimes, understands, and I'm not gonna go into his hero journey because there's so much to explain, right? So I won't be going into that journey, but one thing that Rick Grimes understands is the importance of his allies. Who are the enemies? It was the governor. It was the Negan. But guys, the situations in your life and the people that test you in your life, 
Those are the Negans. Those are the governors. These are the people and the things and the tests of life that you have to overcome. Do you understand where I'm going with this? Because deep down, Rick believed that there was something better and he wanted to build a new world. He wanted to free the people, free humanity so they could actually live a better life and build a new world. Why? Because they were surrounded by the walking dead. Do you see the similarities of the films? Do you see the similarities of the shows? Now look at your life. What are your challenges? Who are the people bothering you? What are the challenges that you're going through? And trust me, guys, there's still people challenging me to this day. But guess what? I'm learning how to deal with it. I'm learning how to overcome it. I never said this is something that will be solved with, within the, literally tomorrow. But as long as I am focusing on that bigger ideal, as long as I'm focusing on that bigger picture, as long as you are focusing on that bigger ideal, as long as you are focusing on that bigger picture, right, then you keep going. And you know, it will work out for you because those agents where Negan, the governor, those are the agents in Rick's matrix, the, 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 the walkers, the zombies, they're like agents as well, many of them. But he had his allies. See, part of the hero's journey, you meet with allies. You meet with enemies. They go together. Because guess what? Even a plant needs dirt to grow. It needs to look towards the sunlight for growth. But it also needs the dirt to grow. The sun being the ally. The dirt being the, 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 the enemy. But I'm talking in the sense of dirt, in the, in the sense of we don't like dirt, it's dirty. But you need both to flourish and you need both to grow. It's impossible to just have the one thing. You are living in a universe of balance of yin and yang. You need the sun, you need the moon, you need the good, you need the bad. You need the love and you need the hate. You need the hot and you need the cold. Damn it. You need the fat and the skinny. You need the rich. You need the poor. Understand everything I'm saying to you. Links with a hero's journey. There has to be the balance. It has to be... The balance of the laws of Ma'at. It can't be too much this side. It can't be too much that side. There, there has to be that universal balance. So speaking about the walking dead. I'm going to play you a song from my EP which is called The Walking Dead. Listen to the lyrics of it. So I'm going to play The Walking Dead right now. I hope you guys like it. It's off my EP, Bentification. Okay? So, here we go. So, yeah, that was The Walking Dead, guys. Man, I have to tell you, it is one of the best tunes on the EP by far. Big up Bear McCreary, uh, who did the, the, the sample of The Walking Dead for the, th the theme song. Absolutely amazing. I hope you guys have been inspired by today's radio show. Um, Mikey says where to purchase your EP. Uh, don't worry, it will be out soon on all the different platforms. Uh, so just uh, pay attention to that. I'll be posting the EP cover on my Instagram very soon. Um, so guys, it's Monday 25th of October. This is empireradio.org stay healthy stay well and remember you are always a hero 
on your own journey. This is Samuel Benta at EmpireRadio.org saying goodbye, guys. Take care. See ya.